We're now going to change slightly our approach because we're going to watch a video that, that Jay uh, has prepared for us. And I've not seen it, so I've no idea what's going to be like, but here we go, Jay Hyde. He was meeting his guest at Liverpool John Lennon Airport. So somebody coming in on a flight, we think. Hi everyone, it's me Jay Hind from The Guide Liverpool. Thank you so much for having me today and I'm so, so sorry that I can't be there in person. So I'm going to send you uh, this, this little task that we've all been given in video format. Starting uh, with this incredible place, our focal point of the city of Liverpool, the Pier Head. We've got a cruise ship in today, there's loads of tourists in, loads of visitors enjoying our city. And you know what? That is what I love about Liverpool. I love hearing different accents, I love hearing tour guides sharing their knowledge with the many visitors that come to Liverpool City region every single year. On a normal year, uh, without pandemics or COVID, 67 million people choose Liverpool as their destination of choice, whether they're travelling up the M62 from Manchester, uh, maybe crossing the Atlantic over from the States, and it's so good to hear so many different accents here every single day. And it's funny when you think about tourism as well, because every single person in Liverpool plays a part, whether that's a cabbie sharing an incredible scout story. Maybe it's a chef sharing a delicious dish that you are never going to forget. Uh, maybe it's a hotel receptionist sharing their top tips as to where you should be going. Or maybe it's one of our incredible tour guides sharing that incredible knowledge of Liverpool and our city region. Tourism in Liverpool is thriving right now, even during these crazy times. And the year of the staycation 2021 has proven that. Here's my top tips for anyone making a 40 eight hour visit to the greatest city in the world. Now I'll start by being really honest. I know I'm probably a little bit over ambitious in terms of how much you can actually fit into 48 hours, uh, but there's just so much to see and so much to do in this great city of ours. And of course, we're starting here, Liverpool John Lennon Airport. In a normal year, this place welcomes over 5 million passengers with flights coming in and out from the likes of Paris, Barcelona, Dublin, Malaga and more. Once you leave those doors, it's time to put your hand in your pocket, get the coppers out and spend money on a black cab because the black cabs in Liverpool really are the backbone of our city. They'll share some incredible stories and give you lots of great advice and tips for your trip to Liverpool. Next up, the hotel. We've got so many to choose from in the city of Liverpool with an abundance of incredible hotels, whether it's a Beatle-themed hotel, a Titanic-themed hotel, on the docks or by the shops, there literally is a hotel for every single taste. Now, I've chosen one that's really small, just 15 rooms, but it does really give you that lovely, intimate, personal feel. It's lock and key on Duke Street, a boutique hotel that you've got to check out. So it's bags in and straight out. And of course, we're starting off on the waterfront, the city's crown jewel, the Royal Albert Dock Liverpool, which is actually the most popular tourist attraction anywhere in the Northwest, home to a host of great restaurants and bars and a whole load of culture too, including our first must visit attraction, the Beatles story. It's home to the largest collection of Beatles memorabilia anywhere in the world. Whether you love the Fab Four or not, you're going to learn lots and you're going to start your Liverpool adventure off perfectly down here. Top that off with lunch at Marais, where you've got to try that disco cauliflower, a swift pint sat outside, dockside at one of the many bars, and your trip to Liverpool is well and truly underway. You can pick up a Liverpool-inspired gift at the nest on the Albert Dock, learn about the city's links with the slave trade at the International Slavery Museum, grab a selfie underneath the very bright and beautiful Liverpool mountain, and of course, call into Tate Liverpool too, just to add to your Albert Dock experience even further. And now I'm going to take you to the heart of Liverpool city centre. You just walk out of the Albert Dock, keep walking, you'll meet loads of Lambanadas on the way as you head to the Pier Head. It's home to our three graces and of course our Fab Four. And we're going to get our steps in today because we're going to keep walking across the Strand if you can get through those roadworks and straight up to Castle Street. And you've definitely got to stop at one of the many bars and eateries on this beautiful street. It overlooks our very grand Liverpool Town Hall and it's just round the corner to another must visit and my favourite street in the entire city. No trip to Liverpool is complete without venturing down Matthew Street. New York's got Times Square, we've got Matthew Street. Yeah, it's always rammed. You'll always see plenty of stags, plenty of hens and plenty of sights. It's full of tourists just like you but it's an absolute must visit. So many great 
great bars, so much atmosphere, so much incredible live music. John Silla, the Wall of Fame, and also the most famous club anywhere in the world. I'm talking about The Cavern. You'll find live music down here day and night, seven days a week. It's hosted everyone from Stevie Wonder to Adele, Elton John to the Arctic Monkeys, and of course, a little known band called The Beatles, who played here 292 times. The only problem is once you're in The Cavern, you just never, ever want to leave. Once you've ventured up those cavern steps after a couple of pints, it's back to the hotel. Quick swill and back out for tea. And Liverpool's food offering is absolutely incredible. It's really grown over the past few years. Cuisines for every single taste imaginable and hundreds of amazing restaurants to choose from. Tonight, though, we're going to go a little bit posh. It's your first night here and we're starting off in one of the city's most picturesque streets, the beautiful Hope Street. Lots of venues, lots of culture, two cathedrals, and lots of cobbles as well. So watch them stilettos. Grab a drink, maybe a papillon, and then head off for a lovely posh tea at the Art School Liverpool. Chef Paul Askew founded this place over five years ago, alongside many other incredible eateries in the city. It's changed the food scene in Liverpool forever. A beautiful, relaxed atmosphere and some of the best food you'll ever tuck into. So day number two, and first thing is first, it's breakfast. You could choose the delicious cooked breakfast at Lock and Key or head up Bowl Street, home to loads and loads of incredible independent eateries and stores, and you'll find loads of tasty treats to start your day. Now, I know Natalie is on the panel today, and I'm not saying it just because she's here, but Leaf is a must-visit place, especially if you love your tea and those cooked breakfasts. You've got Bowl Street coffee or as well, Big Full English from Maggie Mays. And you can't not visit Liverpool without jumping on one of our famous ferries. You can take it from the pier heads and the sightseeing cruise is just 50 minutes long, but you'll be sure to see and learn lots about both sides of the water. From the ferry, I'm going to show you my favourite building in Liverpool. In fact, the largest religious building in the UK and the eighth largest church in the world, Liverpool Cathedral. Now, I'm not religious at all, but you really do get goosebumps as you walk in for the first time. You can't help but be breathtaking by this stunning building. There's always something to see and do at Liverpool Cathedral. It's recently hosted the Peace Dogs, of course, the Angel Wings as well, home to the likes of Cream Classical, Christmas Markets and lots more. It's defo and must visit and your trip to Liverpool. So lunchtime, and one of the city's best eateries, in my opinion, is on Faulkner Street, which is just off Hope Street, where we were last night. You'll get one of the warmest welcomes anywhere in the city. It's tucked away in that beautiful Georgian quarter, simple food, served perfectly. I'm talking about the quarter. After some shopping and exploring of Liverpool One, which is so, so cool, home to 170 shops, bars and restaurants, then I want you to go and see the city from above at my old workplace. I was lucky enough to work at Radio City for 15 years and I never, ever took the views from St. John's Beacon for granted. 450 feet above the skyline of Liverpool, you'll get views right across the Mersey to the Welsh mountains and even Blackpool Tower on a clear day. So tonight you're off for tea at one of my other favourite haunts, a restaurant which you can't help but relax straight into as soon as you enter. Again, really simple food, a really simple menu, but served perfectly and served with a smile as well. Wreckfish Bistro is my choice for food on day number two. And anyone that knows me uh, knows that, yeah, from time to time, I do like a good night out in the city of Liverpool. And you really are spoiled for choice with the huge range of bars and clubs that we've got. Home to the iconic clubs like Cream and Circus. Whether it's delicious handcrafted cocktails at the intimate hideaway that is Berry and Rye. Maybe a couple of pints at one of the city's oldest and most stunning pubs where you've got to go the loo while you're there. Uh, the Phil, which is just off Hope Street, or a little boogie and some bowling at the brilliant Pin Social Club. There really is a bar for everyone and something for every night out imaginable. But one thing is a cert, you might be a little bit hungover for your flight home, but that's allowed. So it's the morning, you're flying back. I really do hope you've had the best 48 hours. The head is a little bit hazy, but why not fit in one more other amazing attraction on the way to the airport? And in fact, it's our newest attraction here in Liverpool, the Strawberry Field Visitor Centre. It will take you back in time to John Lennon's childhood. You'll see the original iconic gates on a beautiful nature trail that were made famous by that song. The perfect way to distract that hangover and end your trip to Liverpool. 
so there we go my Liverpool in just 48 hours there's so much more that I could have mentioned and so much more advice that I could have given to a tourist visiting this great city of ours in two days come back do it all again because there's loads more for you to see and do uh, thank you so much for having me today thanks to all the team at Engage Liverpool enjoy the rest of the seminar Destination Liverpool and I will see you very soon on the guide with more top tips about this beautiful city that we all call home see you soon I suspect that's worth quite a bit of money <laughs> to, to our tourism chiefs. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic. So thank you very much to Jay, and uh, we'll be in touch with Jay to say a special thank you when he comes back. Mm -hmm.